All right. Um, athletic motion golfers, Facebookers, internet golfers. Um, we're gonna get. We've got a bunch of questions that came in from different uh, golfers. Just golf questions, which we love doing. We're all at home. Sean and uh, what's the other guy's name? Uh, Robert. <laughs> or down in Louisiana I'm here just north of Atlanta and uh, let's get some golf talk started so one of the first questions I thought would be good to start off with was one that I'm sure you guys have heard a ton I know I have and it's golfers often thrust their pelvis towards the ball on the downswing which forces the right foot on the toe facing target line how does one get onto the left side without thrusting? What a good question that is. Yeah, so this golfer is obviously describing, so on the downswing, that kind of, we'll call it goat humping, rear end thrust towards the ball, that early right- Extension, we've had. Yeah, early extension, not a big fan of that word, but that right heel comes off the ground, so you're up on that right toe, and what happens from there or or what happened to get from there is it bad first of all i guess would be a good place to start any, any takers not necessarily right not necessarily yeah i don't i don't think you know who's who's won the most majors in the history jack nicholas jack nicholas did he keep his tush line no it's actually off of it by a good amount a good amount i, I always use him as an example of people are shocked yeah. yes they're shocked when they see how, how much Nicholas came off it. I, you know, I, I think this is one of the big kind of early extension EE that's kind of come around in internet age, right? Yeah. YouTube videos, all that, uh, people yeah, line drawings. It's that, it's that obsession with uh, Ben Hogan swing and time. Yeah, time. yeah. I mean, everybody's, got a, everybody's got a camera and a line drawing program in their pocket now. Right. You, you know, the, this, the move that looks like the goat pump is actually really necessary for power. It just kind of the direction in which you do the goat hump is what gives you the different look. The direction and I how much turn you have. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. If if it's if it's a ninety five percent hump, three percent turn, <laughs> you might have a career in another video industry, but <laughs> but not probably in golf. No. So it's it's a blending of everything, right? Can you can you guys see this on my camera right here? Let's see. I can't read it. Oh, lead and trail, yeah. Okay, so so, so if we're gonna get down to something with your pressure plate <laughs> that might cause the trail. What's that? Is that the new Swing Catalyst mobile app? Yeah. <laughs> How many toes is that? <laughs> All right, well, it would be a dive of the pressure trace toward the lead toes late. Actually, actually, Robert, I've, I've seen this one. Hold on, you've got me at my... Let me get my mobile app out, too. <laughs> so... For as high-tech as we are, we like to keep it real over here. Yeah, so I've actually seen this one. Can you see that? A little closer. Ooh, yeah. yeah. I had that one the other day. Where it goes, it's almost literally a squared pressure trace. It goes to the right, straight to the toes, mm -hmm. and then over. Okay. So, so think about, put yours back up again. This is a great topic. Is that close enough? That's an upgrade. Mm -hmm. That's better because that, the timing that it takes to make this squared off move is killing this cat. What you've got is much easier fix, and that's certainly an upgrade. Yeah. But so going back to the what 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 Sean said about the um, you know kind of the percentage of the hump versus the turn, that's that's huge in this scenario. So is the timing. Oh, getting the, getting the pressure over early. Yeah, yeah, and it, it's almost a move. Everything about it. So if we, if, we, if we keep going down the pressure trace, I like to look at pressure traces mainly just kind of a, an inside to their soul of their athleticism. So like Robert's trace and this kind of boxy trace looking thing is just him not knowing exactly what to do, but knowing that I'm late in the downswing and I better get something 
moving to create some sort of speed. And the ball's in front of them. If you played any ball sports, you usually move to the ball. Right. And, it, it, yeah, it's, it's brutal. But that's the extreme. That in and of itself is not a bad move. You know, I actually uh, addressed this issue with a player today. I, I stole a little, a little trick from one of my mentors, Brian Manzella. Is uh, a 12 year old kid, not very strong, lefty. His grandfather kept complaining about this early extension, you know, mm-hmm. look. So I just started rolling him balls and having him hit it as they rolled up to him, and it completely changed when he got on his lead foot. Yeah, and it and it took away that look of early extension right now I, I just don't think people need to be scared of it I, I i don't think you can do it if you get on your lead foot early to, the, especially the dreaded scenario where you know you stand up and you roll yeah yeah and all it's... That. if you're on your lead foot earlier like you would be if you were throwing a ball or hitting a tennis forehand or baseball swing you wouldn't you wouldn't have that dramatic of a look but you might look like jack nicholas if you're lucky yeah that that, that would be a horrible uh a horrible swing to look like. Um, all right, Sean, are you getting video? I see both of you guys. Okay. This is so surreal looking at Robert move, listening to you talk with a club on your shoulders, not moving. <laughs> all right. So, you know, we, we've been doing a lot of videos that the folks out there haven't seen yet. And the setup videos and the early takeaway videos or just the takeaway videos i believe you can clean this early extension up 90 percent if you nail the setup nail the early takeaway mm-hmm. um, you guys see that on your tee as well yeah. oh yeah yeah I, I can tell you something that i i hate to admit that i've i've tried personally for my own swing and i've had players do uh, you kind of back them up to a chair yeah yeah or, or you, you put an alignment stick or you do you give them a reference to maintain their tush line if you will man it just never works it, you never get rid of that early extension look by trying to maintain your tush line well, you're, you're going after symptoms that's right if you, you you try to tackle this early extension as early extension is happening and you got no chance the right. symptom not going yeah to i mean at, at best you will get it the look away but you're going to be so you're going to rob the athleticism of that just hopefully that ballistic all-out move down by the ball it really uh, ruins that person because then they don't even understand the idea of extending through no, the ball. They just no. stay forward bent all the way to the finish. Yep. Yep. It and kills them. They start wiping it worse. No, well, that that's that you you got it out. You beat me to it, Sean. With yep. you get that cat moving laterally deep into that left heel when he has no idea about the club face and he's hitting unplayable shots now. He's wiping it. Yeah. It's a brutal deal. I think it's really low. So, no chance. Did we? I think, I think this gives us an opportunity to, to kind of drive home something that we're doing at Athletic Motion Golf. And it's, you know, we hope that your swing looks pretty, but we much rather see your ball go where you want it to go. Functional. We're not, we're not okay. married to how it looks. We're married to ball flight oh. and, and athletic ability. Cook Boom. some athleticism in there. And if you end up looking like Jack Nicklaus, congratulations. There is there are so many what and this would be such a cool social experiment if it could ever be done. I don't think it can be now. There are so many swing flaws in the Hall of Fame. Golly. Oh yeah. You could go each and every swing and say that's a swing flaw and you've got a scores of golfers out here trying to do it. Guys who work for a living, sit at a desk all day, and then all of a sudden they're trying to take out something out of their swing that could just be the string that unravels everything. So wow. a swing flaw can get you into the Hall of Fame. It's how you play with all those parts, right? It, it's it's not, nothing happens in a vacuum. And Again, you may be more likely to get in the Hall of Fame oh, you have a swing flaw. <laughs> and thank goodness Jack Grout didn't have Jack trying to sit his butt on a chair in the downswing, oh, man. right? Sean, Sean, I got. A, I have a personal question for you. I, I, I know you're working extensively with gears, which is you know the 3D motion capture, and, and you've really taken the deep dive into 
swing catalyst. Uh, would you say that you get some of those traditional looks or those orthodox looks for free by working on the pressure trace? Or what are you seeing how cleaning up the pressure or, or the forces is cleaning yeah. up the gear stuff? Yeah, yeah, especially um, once they realize, I guess it's getting them to move. I ask a lot of questions about other sports. Have you played tennis? Have you played baseball? I'm a big believer in asking a lot of questions about other sports because then I can get a little more insight. But as soon as they realize that it's a similar um, pressure movement, you know, it gets over early and um, earlier than they even realize. Yeah. It changes things. And yeah, for sure changes um, the look of the downswing a lot of times it's a little shallow out they get a little bit better impact position and uh, more club head speed so I mean in a roundabout way the trace cleaning up cleans up a lot of things for sure it's funny you say that Sean I was filming today for athletic motion golf uh, throwing a ball throwing a football mm. tennis forehand yeah. they are they're exactly the same pressure trace and it, it's, it's did you got it, athletes just move at a certain a sequence, a certain timing that as soon as you put a stationary ball in front of a golfer and give them a golf club, all of that goes out the window for so many golfers. And we're just trying to reclaim some of that, right? This game would be easier if you played it on a really high tee. Yeah. Step into it. <laughs> yeah, exactly right. Play it like a normal round. Throw a defender out there. Yeah. <laughs> so I, I was working with an 11-year-old kid or 12-year-old kid today. He's kind of new to the game, super, super athlete. And he had, for me, the quote of the year. Um, so I had him doing a little step drill, and I'm not always the biggest fa fan of a step drill, but he's a really, really good baseball player. And I want to tell you what, it, it works for the right person. Step drill. Works. Absolutely, it, absolutely. It, it, you know, this kid, Michael Jacobs. Gotten, <laughs> this, kid, this kid had gotten locked up because he, he was playing golf instead of playing a sport. Yeah, he was, yeah. He was real static, stagnant. Right. Ball, and, and I started rolling balls, had him stepping. And then he looked at me, the light bulb moment, he looked at me and said, the sooner I take the step, oh, the, beautiful. Better I, the better I hit it. And then, he, and then he elaborated, really smart kid. He said, so basically, the sooner I move, the easier golf is. And I was like, hey, kid, I'm writing this one down. Well, oh, that's, I love, absolutely love that. The sooner I move, the easier golf is. That was the quote? That was the quote. Put that down. We're going to yeah. use that. Um, Sean, how 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 differently would your golf career have gone? Because you've been playing golf for a long time. You're what, 57 years old? Yeah, well, <laughs> my back is 57. <laughs> you've been playing for 30 years. How easier, how differently would your career have gone if you would have had that same lesson at 12 years old? Oh, yeah. Well, hopefully we'd still be playing golf. Uh, it's unbelievable, man. Did, did, to have... so. Anyone coming up now, and we're starting to see that the Jordan Spieth generation, but even kind of a generation or two younger than that, we're going to see some unbelievable things with the information these kids are just learning the game on. And the Olympics. Yo. Tra changing the training style. It's going to be awesome. Holistic. I mean, the whole thing is going to take off. It's going to be awesome. All right, so back to now that we went on that little rant, um, how does one get onto the left side without thrusting? I'm not sure if we really tackled the, the the meat of his question. We kind of did in the roundabout way, and the fact that you may have some thrust depending on turn versus thrust. Ratio, yeah. I guess you would say. And the, then yeah. getting to the left side early. Um, you guys can elaborate a little bit more on that. What part of the push you Sean, Sean, I think I think this is kind of your world. It's it's. People have this illusion of maintaining posture, so if you try to maintain your forward bend and mm. get and get left, it ain't gonna work out. You're right. replacing the, the forward bend with the right side bend. And extension. And extension. So it, it has to happen. Yeah. Well if if you've if you're blessed with uh, uh, Dustin Johnson type, you know, athleticism and can get Sean, what what would be your best guess? We may have seen his numbers. Uh, what kind of open with he open is he with the pelvis? 
Good lord, I mean. Massively, right? You might gotta be like 50, 50, 50, 60. It's probably more than that. It's yeah. Than that. 60, 65? I've got a junior that you guys both know what it is. I won't mention his name. Uh, that's been on gears. He's 70. Oh. So 70% open. It's hard for me to get 70 open in the backswing. 70, 70, uh, 70 so s open. And then the upper body, you know, because it's so side bent, it doesn't look as open, but the trunk is actually probably 30 degrees open. So tush line for that cat, no problem. Nope, it might go right through it. That's right. Now, if you take somebody who, like me, who's got six screws in his spine, th that's a pipe dream. So, you know, g give me 10, and I'm not staying on the touch line to generate power. Nope. Then that's not bad. You, you can use the ground in a vertical motion to generate power. Mm -hmm. um, you can do it to screw up your swing. You can do a lot. But if, if you physically, and I, and I know the guy a little bit has sent this question in, if it's physically not in the cards, trying to make it happen is going to make you miserable. You got to hurt yourself. Man. Yeah. And you're just going to kind of manufacture a look, which is the complete opposite of what we're after. So I, my advice would be on how do you get left side without thrusting is really, 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 and I'm disappointed because this guy's had a lesson from me. <laughs> <laughs> well, it, 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 isn't, the answer, isn't the answer, if he's looking for an actual answer to put in his little journal, do it earlier than that. You got the words right out of my mouth. You've got to get left earlier. You the, um, gosh, what's the what's the phrase? The idle hands, the devils, or how does that go? Uh, the, idle the, idle, the idle mind is the, the devil playground. playground. Yeah, an idle pressure <laughs> is the swing is the swing devil's playground. If that pressure is just hanging out, it, oh man. <laughs> and swing angels don't come down and start really polishing that pressure trace, right? It goes to H-E double hockey sticks in a hand basket quick. Uh, find, your swing angels, yes, find your swing angels. Find your swing angels. What's that other saying go? Never talk politics and religion. <laughs> no, man, this is good stuff. So, yeah, it, it's got to be moving earlier if it's in the cards. If it's not in the cards, don't go crazy because your tush line comes off two inches from... Man, we, you know. we could beat this dead horse because it's fun to beat it. Um, no one's talking about early extension or maintaining posture in baseball swings or hockey slap shots. No one's talking about that in those sports. I, I, why are we talking about that in golf? That's kind of my question because no one moves in golf. We all camp out on the backside. No. It's, uh, it's just, you know. Yeah. There, there's my way. Okay. Hey, what part of the foot do you like? Talk about that, Mike. Uh, with, with what's that? Oh, okay, yeah, that was the other thing. So yeah. coming up, uh, good point, Sean. I meant to talk about that earlier. So forces back to his question forces the right foot on the toe, facing target line. So he's saying just the heel comes up and you've got pressure on your right foot. That it's got to go there. Yeah. I I much prefer to go on the left foot. Where would you like to see it for the other guy? On the downswing. Yeah, yeah. Talk talk to that for a minute. So it, it, a lot of things happen. Uh, and if you were building a golfer from scratch, I would have on the takeaway, I would have the lead heel pressure disappear. And actually that's not a wish list. That should happen with pretty much anybody. Now that, that can either look like Bubba and Jack lifting the heel way up off the ground, mm -hmm. or it could look like Jason Day and Roy McElroy who get complete pressure off of that lead heel, but you can't tell it a bit because they're standing on grass and it's very subtle. Yeah, and it's kind of light. Man. Yeah, just cop it's the same move. Now, as far as the downswing goes, I like to reverse that. I'm, I'm not a big fan. Yeah, you gotta have really gifted hips uh, if you're gonna do the Kenny Perry move. Which is way to the... With, with both heels firmly in the ground, appearingly both heels firmly in the ground at impact through the ball. Yeah, I don't like that either. It's just not a move that most amateurs can pull off with any sort of sweet spot vicinity control. Right. Uh, would, you like the, would you like the pressure when the midfoot on the left foot coming down if you had a choice? It, it really goes into the timing and the players. Um, I think it's a fairly good cheat 
the more they get towards the toe if they have some hip restrictions. Um, you know, if you got somebody who's really locked up in the hips, getting off that heel is going to help. Off the left heel. Yeah. And it, it, it could be past mid toe, it could be past mid foot. You know, you've got kind of speaking in hypotheticals now, but I, I basically like the reverse of the uh, downswing, or excuse me, the backswing. Because I can like, as it should have gone, you know. Yeah. I, I think for for the player's goal, kind of kind of wherever it ends, wherever it manifests, it's kind of a good idea to or a target for your pressure would be kind of the bottom shoelaces. Yeah. Or, or, you know, the, the middle to bottom shoelaces as your target. Like if yeah, that right. shows up in your toes or your heels, that's fine. We're not going to micromanage that. Right. Uh, well, a, a really a really crazy concept, um, and, I, and I know we're doing a ton of videos. I think Sean's already got four or five of them done of uh, swing myths. Yeah. And a really... And that's going to be an umbrella for just a lot of getting stuff off our chest. <laughs> mm -hmm. But uh, one of the ones that I see a lot, and you know, I'm 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 into the pressure movements, um, is uh, the golfer's idea. Okay, so I want to be balanced in the golf swing. Okay, I know what a pressure trace looks like. I'm going to try to maintain pressure over those shoelaces, over the ball of my foot through the whole swing. That's almost a perfect recipe to get yourself out of balance mm -hmm. because you've got this big weighted club you're swinging all over the place mm -hmm. and that thing generates a lot of force on the body so to to actually try to stay in balance almost guarantees you'll get out of balance mm -hmm. and the contrast to that is also true if you go heel one foot toe the other foot and get yourself kind of out of balance dynamically then you're pretty much going to stay in balance throughout the swing. So it's not something that you can really cheat by trying to just be quiet. Mm -hmm. And I know that was real big a few years ago, you know, quiet lower body, yeah. you know, all, all of those things. Yeah. And we're, thank goodness we're in. That almost ruined me. Oh, thank goodness we have the crop of players that are really dominating the game today who don't do that to kind of pull us out of that. The Bubba's. Uh, the McElroys, um, you know, uh, Jordan Spieth, right? All these guys are, they're nothing quiet about them. When I was a kid, I was doing nothing but trying to keep my hips quiet. Oh. Because I read it or I saw it or heard it. I mean, I was just trying to keep my legs, the same flex in both legs. The whole wow. Time. So just, I mean, you know. I, people are still trying. I get people. Yeah, there's such a lag with information. Absolutely. Yeah, but just No, it's exactly right. Lack of information. I mean, you're a talented golfer. And how many years does that take off your golf career? The prime of your golf career? I, yeah, I had a guy today. I, are you sure it's okay for me to straighten my right leg on the back? So I'm like, yeah, you're, not, you're, turning, 10, <laughs> you're turning 10 degrees. <laughs> 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 I was like, dude, you got to do everything you can do to turn. Me. I remember the first lesson I had while using Swing Catalyst where the golfer actually said, you mean it's okay to do that? Yeah. You know, like we were breaking some sort of uh, 11th commandment in the golf swing yep. to stay on the religion yeah. theme. <laughs> but... Said, hey, man, you need to bend your left arm a little. The guy looked at me like I had three... <laughs> Dude, your tricep is going to bust out of your arm and your arm any straighter. Oh, I mean, it's if we do nothing else but just free up some, some guy out there who's got the talent to be a really good golfer, then it's been a huge success what we're trying to do. Um, yeah, just restricting movement for the sake of the look of it is... Uh, yeah, the, the, it's, the restrict the hips for that... X Factor stretch. Yeah. Really, really popular. Right when I started. You can get sick. <laughs> <laughs> <You're good. laughs> I got rid of that. <laughs> Robert <laughs> at athleticmotiongolf.com. Uh, <laughs> that was a long time that was around the internet. It's got me uh, lit up on there. <laughs> on page worth. Using that term. No. So we got you guys want to take time for another quick one? Sure. That one wasn't a quick one, but th there was a lot of hot buttons in that question. Well played, sir. 
Uh, let's do a quick, yeah, let's do a quick short game one here. Let's see. There was one on here I saw the other day. Let me find it. Just talk amongst yourselves. <laughs> uh, Awkward pause. <laughs> It's nothing better than dead air on a video. <laughs> Smoke if you got them. <laughs> Come on with a question, man. Just make up something. Oh, boy. Here we go. Okay. Um, player has a side hill lie with ball above his feet. Sets up for a draw by aiming at the right bunker. I mean, this guy's got – this must be a scar in this guy's mind because he's got bunkers. Wow. He's probably got rakes in mind. That must have been a yeah, very uh, tragic moment. Yeah, I mean, isn't that how we remember all of our bad shots? I mean, oh, <laughs> the bird on the tree branch had red wings. <laughs> um, all right, sets up for a draw by aiming at the right bunker. He hits it right of the bunker. Why the double cross? So obviously, ball above his feet, bunker's right of the green. He's allowing for it to come sweeping in like it should, quote unquote, because the magic golf angels, the, the swing fairies, deem that every ball above your feet is going to sweep to the right, uh, as, if, as if we don't have any control over that. Uh, I've had enough information there, my boy. Yeah, why does that double cross? Well, it, it, the easiest terms is you had a, a, a path that was a left of your face. And dynamic lie angle is massively important. We see that with foresight, being able to measure that impact location. But guys, it, it doesn't matter the, the lie you have. If you get those face to path ratios pointing wherever enough, you're going to hit some really impressive, <laughs> impressively surprising shots. And, and that, that question there, I don't know who signed it or whatever, but... <laughs> You may just need to practice side hill odds, you know. Yeah. <laughs> it, you know just to kinda, figure out what the ball's gonna do. Is this, this 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 one this one resonates with me quite a bit because we, we've uh, it's pretty flat down here in South Louisiana, <laughs> and, and anytime I get and you know go north or, or you know any direction, um, get into the hills, it's something I'm thinking about quite a bit when I get on a side hill lie or anything. I think that that kind of the better players miss, if you will, will be to kind of overcorrect for that yep. That increased upright dynamic line angle that would, you know, cause some draw spin. Sure. So you just kind of hold the face and block it out to the right uh, yeah. to avoid the hook. Right. It's sure. kind of, it's kind of an, an intuitive save for, for overhooking it. So and just, it yeah, just think about it. Uh, in sheer terms of uh, a pressure movement, where do you think the pressure is moving sharply on those kind of lies? That's a good question. Uh, 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 and I mean, and he healed it. Intuitively, you think it'd be moving back toward your heels. Back to your heels. That, that, that would be the intuitive yeah. answer, yes. Yeah. So that's often associated with most golfers on a flat surface. If, if you a big heel driver that you're going to have a path that's going to be moving to the left for a right-handed golfer. Yeah. Uh, it would be interesting to see what actually happens, but there's a lot of goofy things happening, uh, especially depending on what the club is. So if, if that's a 60-degree wedge shot he's describing, it's going to be a lot stronger uh, influence that the golfer would have to provide for that ball to double cross. Right. If yeah. that's a 5-iron, that's not hard to do. Um, so they're, they're, like Sean said, there's a lot of variables, a lot of missing information to really drill down on it. But ultimately, you're in control, not the terrain. The terrain can certainly influence it, but you've got complete control of where that ball goes. And you know, You're, uh, you're going to hear us emphasize the, the when you're moving a whole lot. Yeah. Uh, and that's why it's so important because when you get on an uneven lie or when you get in a golf course situation – the minutia of heel, toe, shoelaces is just minutia in that environment. But the when you move from trail foot to lead foot, that's kind of your saving grace on, on, on any side hill lie, downhill lie, whatever you got. You do it early, man. You can you can start to like like Mike said, 
impress yourself. Yeah, so, I mean, that, that's a great point because one of the things I try to tell every player that comes in is that, you know, when when there's an issue, so, they, you know, they look so, okay, so is it that important? So, well, think about it like this. You're standing on a perfectly flat lie, a perfect lie for your ball, and you're having difficulty moving. Your, your timing is, is really off when you move. Do you think that gets better or worse as the lies get worse? And it, the, the timing of it is something that you can carry really to any shot off any lie that you have. The, uh, is that the mascot? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Love it. So, yeah, it's a, uh, it, it's a big deal. And I think, I don't know who sent this in. Uh, well, I do know the name. I, just, I don't know anything about their game. But my experience is that with the ball above your feet, um, a certain skill of golfer is going to have a really easy time still making that ball go to the right versus if the ball was below their feet, them overcompensating and hitting a big draw or hook. Um, do do y'all see that as well? Like a, a better player will hit the double cross with the with more of a slice shot than yeah, the yeah. worst player will still find a way to slice it off of a hook line. Right. Yeah. Just, just from a first-person perspective, because you know, I'm still playing quite a bit, I'm, I'm more likely to miss left when the ball's below my feet than I am to miss right when it's above my feet. That's right. Yeah. And, and, you know, it's just an observation. I haven't really thought too deeply about it till this question, but it's something that, you know, you obviously have better face control, the feel for where the face is, than, than a guy who says who's a 10, 15 handicap, right? It's just you get better at that as you get more skilled in golf. And I, and I think that's as the lies get worse, whatever your perception of where that face is also gets worse. So if there's a big margin there to begin with and now you're on a bad lie, you're going to get a bigger margin. Maybe yeah. could maybe, maybe could have led with that, but <laughs> um, yeah, good questions, really good questions, good uh, good Skype call. We'll get uh, we'll pass the collection plate at the end of this, so Sean can uh, <laughs> so we can prove that there is a Sean Webb. <laughs> <laughs> Looks like we pulled this ad off of a, a Ralph Lauren. Uh, <laughs> this picture off a of Ralph Lauren ad. <laughs> I, I actually can't see Sean's pictures. Oh, you can't see it? No, I can't. Okay, it's, no, he's, it's, let me describe it. He's got uh, a big grin. Uh, it looks like he's standing in front of a pond of some sort, like you just flagged one from 290. Club draped over his shoulder. I mean, he's got all, he's hitting all the points here. <laughs> Trying to flex the forearms to get a little gun action. <laughs> That's great. Oh, All right, gentlemen. All right, guys. So this is going to be something that we're going to be doing quite a bit, uh, especially as more and more questions keep coming in. So if you guys... We're on Facebook. We're on Facebook. Yeah. Yeah. That's exactly where we're going to put it. So I, I was just going to keep it on my phone and... and <laughs> Tell me, send us your question. Send us your question. <laughs> oh, I didn't hear what she said. <laughs> questions on Facebook. Yes. Post questions on Facebook. You can put them right below this video. Um, create own topic if you want. Uh, guys, this Facebook page, really, our, everything we do is 100% to answer your questions, to help you better swing, play, score better, hit it farther. So if we don't hear from you, we can't help you. So anything. Yeah, this, this is all for you guys. You know? Yeah, absolutely. Any questions, let us know. We'd be happy to help. And... Um, Great, great first couple questions. Thanks for sending those in, guys. And uh, any any parting thoughts, guys? Or are we good? No, I think we're good. Keep an eye out for some new content. For Absolutely. A few days, and uh, we'll talk to you soon. All right, guys. Take care.